We are so excited to share this with you guys. This is the Travel Cabin 2.0. If you're new to the channel, we love cabins and it's always been a dream of mine to build a cabin on a trailer and we finally did that last year. Now the first cabin on wheels that I built was only 32 square feet. It was built upon a four foot by eight foot utility trailer. And then about 10 months ago, we found out that we were adding on to our family and we would need a bigger cabin. So let's dive into this thing. We're gonna start with a tour of the cabin, real rough. I'm just gonna show you all the ins and outs and then we're gonna go to the build and you'll see exactly how I put this thing together. All right, so I wanna talk about the shape of the cabin itself. I designed this with a few things in mind. Number one, I wanted to be able to stand up in the living space and the kitchen. Now in the back, that's where the bedroom is. And I wanted this thing to be much more aerodynamic. Our last cabin was just a, a tower. <laughs> and when you were driving, the wind just like, lasted that thing it was so it was not the best on the highway so if you take a look here you know you can see that it's got that slope in the back and the wind will come right off the car travel up that slope and out the back so what's great about this thing is it not only gives you easy access into the cabin um, but i put these legs on it right here that allow it to be a full-on porch also, if you take a look on the front, we've got our porch light. This porch light on our old cabin was one of my favorite things. Um, I just love how it illuminated the whole area at night, but also it just gives it a little bit of character. I think it looks really, really great. This is a vent to our propane heater. This right here is such an upgrade from the heating system that we had in our last cabin. Our last cabin, I was using a Chinese diesel heater that constantly had problems. Let's just say I'm really happy to have a safe, reliable heating source. I had to figure out what to do with the gas line and I wasn't really interested in having tanks mounted all the time on this because you're only using heat half the year. So what I did was I ran the line for the propane tank underneath the cabin and it pops out here and it goes into this uh, case. And when you open it up, you've got your regulator in here and as far as bathroom things are concerned you guys we've got just a very simple bucket composting toilet system that we use and what's great is this is able to be stored back here on the tongue so we never have to be hauling you know gross stuff inside the cabin or inside the car we also have a shower system with a water heater that's heated by propane it's incredible here's some footage of it on our old cabin build uh, we're gonna mount that right here uh, or somewhere on this side of the cabin so that we're able to take showers when we're out on the road as well. I want to just touch on the color scheme here. The stain and this green are an homage to our family cabin up north. Uh, we've since painted our other travel cabin with this color scheme and of course we had to do this one as well. Uh, I just love it. All right guys, let's go inside and check out the interior. Welcome to the interior of Travel Cabin 2.0. This thing is so, so nice, you guys. Our last build was incredible. It is, it will always have a special place in my heart. It was incredibly rustic. Everything was really intentionally designed and it had everything that we needed. But this right here is more polished. It's got more style and it is way more comfortable. Let's take a look at the bed. We've got a full size bed in here. Uh, I built the frame myself. I'll show you a little bit more underneath that. It was important to us to be comfortable and get good sleep. Our last cabin had the twin size bed. <laughs> that was like so incredibly crammed having both of us in there. And so we knew we wanted to have more space in here. If you take a look, we've got tons of pillows so that we can use this almost as a couch uh, during the daytime. Uh, we've also got this shelf, which I built myself. Uh, we've got our Bluetooth Victrola speaker here, a really, really tiny one that actually Velcros onto the shelf. I love this thing because it's an homage to the Victrola that we have at our cabin up north. We also have a Victrola Bluetooth speaker in our tiny A-frame. We do have a window here in the back, which was really important, not only for ventilation, but also just to be able to see what's going on. There have been many times when we've been out where, you know, you hear something and you kind of want to see what's going on out there. And so having a window um, 
was something that we knew we needed. I put in this hook up here uh, to be able to, you know, hook on your backpack. Luggage space is something that we don't actually have much of in this cabin. Um, so you can put a backpack with some of your luggage there. The other hook is up here. I put in this reading light down here. It's got a little switch. Um, oh, and this was something that we were really, really excited about. We put in these curtains to make it so that if you're sleeping and the other person wants to get up, you're able to black it out in there because we've got curtains there and continue to get some sleep. And it just offers a little bit of a separation of the rooms and the living spaces, which is really, really cool. So the last thing that uh, we have in the bedroom space is our storage. So if you lift up our mattress, this is where we store all of the knickknacks that we need. So we've got extra blankets there. We've got all of our like hardware stuff in there, solar panels. Uh, over here, we've got like an extra sleeping bag, uh, hatchets, things like that, that we use, just tools. And over here, we've got extra things like toilet paper, garbage bags, and things like that. So moving on from the bedroom, we've got the kitchenette. Now, um, we'll start with the uh, shelving here. I knew that I wanted to have lots of shelving, places to store our, you know, coffee mugs and things, our plates, bowls, coffee itself, things like that. But I also wanted some pantry space for storing, you know, dry items. So this lower shelf here has lots of room for storing food. Down below we have our uh, paper towel holder and on the sides, on hooks, we've got our pots and pans, some other cooking utensils here. Now I also put up a uh, light here in the kitchen. It can move around like that. The switch is back here. I'm the guy that's up early in the morning making coffee and uh, I don't wanna just illuminate the entire cabin. And so I'm able to just turn on this light make my coffee, do whatever I need to do, and it keeps the rest of the space dark. And that's gonna be important because we're gonna have a baby in here. <laughs> so this is the counter space. In our old cabin, we had a stove top mounted onto our counter. In this build, we decided to do something different. We decided to build storage underneath to be able to take this out when we need it, set it up, do your cooking, and then put it away and, and open up this space for other things. Under here, we've got a little bin with uh, utensils and a cutting board and other kitchen uh, tools. But most importantly, we have our refrigerator. This can either be opened underneath here and you can reach in and grab what you need, or you can pull it out if you'd like to have more access. Directly to the side, we have our garbage can, which is, uh, secured with this strap here so that thing's not going anywhere all right so on the opposite side of the cabin we've got our living area got a couple chairs here this was another uh, non-negotiable for me honestly in this cabin i wanted to have a place to sit at all times in our last cabin if riley or any of us were in bed you had nowhere to sit and because i get up so much earlier now with a baby we both get up early but Nonetheless, it was important to have a place where one of us could hang out if the other one was still sleeping or just resting or whatever. Directly behind the chairs, we've got a convertible table. So this thing folds up. We've got these two legs that prop it up and uh, this essentially becomes a dining table. It becomes a desk, whatever you need it to be. Up above the chairs, we've got some shelving. This is gonna just be for whatever we bring in with us. Maybe it'll be some clothes or uh, yeah, knickknacks, whatever. I just wanted to have some places to stash stuff while we're here. Uh, we do have some artwork in here as well. Riley got me this, this is the two of us. <laughs> and uh, I absolutely love it. Now down below in the living space, we've got a few different things. We've got an outlet here, which is, uh, you know, powering all of our electronics. It's coming off of our portable power station over here. Um, everything here is being run off of this portable power station. And I wanted ease of access to this thing. So you're able to just bring it right in the door, 
plop it down right there and just plug a few different plugs in. And that is what's running all the lights and everything. Now we do live in Minnesota. And so I thought if we're building another cabin, why not put a little fish hole in it? So this is for ice fishing. I have a little metal plate here covering it because it's about to be summer. But uh, this is gonna allow us to be able to do ice fishing right here out of the cabin. And I cannot wait for that. Finally, we've got this corner of the cabin, which has our propane heater. This is a direct vent propane heater. So what that means is it's venting all of the bad stuff basically out the cabin. It's very, very safe. And that was something that was really, really important to me. Above it, we've got a bulletin board here. You can see it's just like a cork board, uh, but that has our photo wall. Uh, another staple of Stewart family cabins is the photo wall. All the pictures uh, from your adventures in the cabins. And uh, so that's why this thing is absolutely covered with pictures. And then of course we've got this right here. This is the uh, controls for the cafe lights. And there's one final detail on the interior that I want to mention. Uh, we actually ended up switching out the chairs that we have in here for folding chairs. And what that has allowed us to do is uh, make room for little Olivia's bassinet. <laughs> so we're able to fold up the chairs when we don't need them or maybe just put them outside on the porch. And we have plenty of room for her bassinet so she has a place to sleep. All right, guys, so that is the tour of the cabin. I hope you enjoyed it. Now it is time for the nitty gritty. I'm gonna show you how I built this thing. I filmed the entire thing, so uh, let's get into it. I wanna start off this build portion of the video by saying that unfortunately or fortunately, depending how you look at it, uh, we sold the original travel cabin. We sold it to a really, really nice lady who's gonna give it a great home. Um, and it's bittersweet because on the one hand, I love that cabin, but on the other hand, it is what has made building this new one possible for us financially. We sold it for $5,000, and so that was our budget for this build. Now, a major chunk of our budget was put into this trailer. Uh, the, the mistake that I made on our first build was building upon a cheap uh, <laughs> trailer that wasn't really meant to be built upon. And so for this build, I knew that I wanted a solid, sturdy trailer that could handle what we were trying to do with it. Just got her in the warehouse. So we are ready to go. I was fortunate enough to use the warehouse space at the office that I work at, uh, which is climate controlled. And that made this build possible because I started in the dead of winter. I started out putting together the framing for the cabin. And this was actually a little more difficult than uh, I thought. All my previous builds have been just one basic uh, dimensional structure, and this one has multiple pitches and different rooms and things like that. And so uh, I had to be very, very careful and detail oriented while putting this together. Once the framing was complete, it was time to get it on the trailer, which is always the first real fun part because you start to see the shape coming together rather quickly. And from here, I just kept going and started to put up the rafters. Uh, this was also a little bit more difficult because I was dealing with two different pitches. So I started by putting the rafters up in front, then found my angle to be able to sort of attach them to the rafters that are going on the back of the cabin. I then framed out uh, the front wall and added on our door. Afterwards, I installed the windows and then moved on to one of the more uh, crucial parts of the build, making sure I had space for our propane heater. Next was time to add the house wrap and you'll notice that I did not do any sheathing. And the reason for that was to cut down on weight. On the first travel cabin build, I put plywood sheathing down and I think it just was unnecessary. Sure, it added structural support, but the heavy duty plywood siding was enough support I believe for this structure. And so I decided to forego the sheathing and just wrap this thing up. Uh, the house wrap is a uh, moisture barrier. So it really helps uh, seal it in and keep the weather out. From there, I put the plywood on the roof, starting to finally enclose this thing. 
Before I put on the siding, I wanted to lay down a few bolts to secure the cabin to the metal trailer frame. This is such an important part of the build because it's what's gonna keep this cabin from flying off the trailer when you're going down the highway. From there, it was finally time to start putting on that siding, which is a little bit of a complicated task. While doing the siding, I decided to also start working on the floor inside the cabin. I find that mixing in different jobs helps keep me from burning out on one specific task. So I laid down insulation inside, then some very, very thin plywood boards. And eventually, both those jobs were finished. Next, it was time for one of the most tedious jobs of the entire build, and that's cutting out the insulation for the inside as well as the boards that will cover it. It's tedious because there's a lot of measuring to do, there are angles, there are a lot of cuts, and uh, it's just not the most fun work to do, but of course, it's incredibly necessary. Once again, I was able to uh, keep my sanity by breaking up these tasks a little bit. Uh, I went to work on the roof, which was definitely a little bit of a challenge this time. I then installed our roofing panels on the top portion of the roof, then worked on the back portion. From there, it was time to bridge the gap by doing tons of flashing work and sealing every nook and cranny. And then I continued with more work on the interior, as well as putting up the trim on the outside of the cabin. So I finished up with the insulation and putting boards on the walls. And as you can see, I used little boards to cover the cracks inside. Um, also, as you can tell, I'm painting. Uh, we picked out a nice color. It's a, kind of a tannish color for the walls, something that'll feel rustic, but at the same time will be clean looking and reflect light inside the cabin. Now it was finally time to put down the floor. We got a roll of vinyl flooring and I cut it to size, laid it out inside the cabin and secured it. Then it was time for another daunting task, cutting a hole in the floor for our ice fishing hole. Now it was time to start working on the furniture on the inside and I began with the kitchenette. I built the frame first, then added plywood to the sides and the top, painted it. Then I built our convertible table on the windowsill, put together the shelf over the kitchenette, and then worked on the bed frame. Next, I hung our cafe lights, put up the other lighting fixtures, and did some very simple wiring. With everything else out of the way, it was finally time to paint the trim on the outside and stain the cabin. Travel Cabin 2.0 is finished and it is time for the daunting task of pulling it out of the shop for the first time ever. So far, it's towing like a dream. I can't even like tell there's anything back there. So far, so good. I'm gonna take her back to the shop and uh, get her parked outside. Everything checks out, cabin is finished. I don't know what to say. It's amazing. So there you have it, guys. That's the tour and the build. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you a sense of what it takes to build a cabin like this and all the different things that you need. And I'll have you know that we were not able to stay within the $5,000 budget, but we did make it within six. That's not so bad. Honestly, when you look at this entire build, that's pretty remarkable. And we are so excited to be taking this out on the road ASAP and to share all of our adventures with you guys. So stay tuned for that and we'll uh, see you on the next one.